morning boys and girls welcome to church i'm so excited to see you in church today how was your week yes good mine was good as well welcome to church um yes it's another beautiful day in the presence of god and we thank god for the gift of life but before we go ahead let's say a word of prayer and so a righteous father we give you praise we worship your holy name we're so grateful god for the gift of life for bringing us back oh god even today to worship at your feet lord even as we listen to your word oh lord we pray that you speak to us oh god open up our hearts oh god to receive that which you have prepared for us today for in jesus name i pray amen amen boys and girls and guess what's next praise and worship time let's go dance in the presence of god
Welcome back boys and girls. I hope you gave God your best dance. Yes, I danced as well. Okay, now let's jump right into our topic. And our lesson for today is the people kept sinning. The people kept sinning. Say with me boys and girls, the people kept sinning hmm. again the people kept sinning yes i know the question you have like who are those people yeah mm -hmm. you know we'll, have, we'll talk about that in a minute but before we go ahead let's read our bible text for today and our bible text for today is from the book of romans chapter 6 verse 23 romans chapter 6 verse 23 and teacher is going to read the bible for us today go grab your bible boys and girls or if mommy is close to you or daddy is close to you tell mommy and daddy to help you with your bible today and Romans chapter 6 verse 23 says, For the wages of sin is death, but the free gift of God is eternal life through Christ Jesus our Lord. And that goes for our memory verse as well. Our memory verse is from Romans chapter 6 verse 23. And a friend of ours is going to help recite our memory verse. Boys and girls, recite along and learn. Romans chapter 6, verse 23. For the wages of sin is death, but the gift of God is eternal life in Christ Jesus our Lord. Thank you, our dear friend, for that wonderful memory of us. You did a great job. Thank you and God bless you. Yes. So, before we go further, let's go watch this video that is going to give a kind of explanation and summary of our topic today. Remember, our topic says, the people kept sinning. And this story is from Judges chapter 2. Pay attention and watch this video. The book of Judges. So remember, after Joshua led the tribes of Israel into the promised land, he called them to be faithful to their covenant with God by obeying the commands of the Torah. And if they do this, they will show all the other nations what God is like. So Judges begins with the death of Joshua and basically tells the story of Israel's total failure. The book's name comes from the type of leaders Israel had in this period. Before they had any kings, the tribes were all governed by these judges. Now, don't think of a courtroom. These were regional political military leaders, more like a tribal chieftain. And you need to be warned, the book of Judges is very disturbing and violent. It tells the tragic tale of Israel's moral corruption, of its bad leadership, and basically how they become no different than the Canaanites. But this sad story is also meant to generate hope for the future. And you can see this in how the book's designed. There's a large introduction that sets the stage for Israel's failure as they don't drive out the remaining Canaanites. Then the large main section of the book has stories about the growing corruption of Israel's judges. And the progression here shows how Israel's leaders go from pretty good to okay to bad to worse. The concluding section is really disturbing and shows the corruption of the people of Israel as a whole. So let's dive in and we can explore each part a bit more. The opening section begins with the tribes of Israel in their territories in the Promised Land. And while Joshua defeated some key Canaanite towns, there was still a lot of land to be taken and lots of Canaanites living in those areas. And so chapter 1 gives a long list of Canaanite groups and towns that Israel just failed to drive out from the land. Now, remember, the whole point of driving out the Canaanites was to avoid their moral corruption and their way of worshiping the gods through child sacrifice. God had called Israel to be a holy people, and that does not 
happen. Chapter 2 describes how Israel just moved in alongside the Canaanites and adopted all their cultural and religious practices. And it's right here that the story stops. For nearly a whole chapter, the narrator gives us an overview of everything that's about to happen in the body of the book. This part of Israel's history, the narrator says, was a series of cycles moving in a downward spiral. So Israel became like the Canaanites, and so they would sin against God. So God would allow them to be conquered and oppressed by the Canaanites, and eventually the Israelites would see the error of their ways and repent. So God would raise up a deliverer, a judge, from among Israel who would defeat the enemy and bring about an era of peace. But eventually Israel would sin again, and it would all start over. This cycle provides the literary design and flow for the next main section of the book. It gets repeated for each of the six main judges whose stories are told here. Now, the stories of the first three judges, Othniel, Ehud, and Deborah, epic adventures, they're also extremely bloody stories. Either the judge themselves or people who help the judge, they defeat their enemies and deliver the people of Israel. The stories about the next three judges are longer, and they focus in on the character flaws of the judges, which get increasingly worse. So Gideon, he begins pretty well. He's a coward of a man, but he eventually comes to trust that God can save Israel through him. And so he defeats a huge army of Midianites with only 300 men carrying torches and clay pots. But Gideon has a nasty temper, and he murders a bunch of fellow Israelites for not helping him in his battle. And then it all goes downhill from there. He makes an idol from the gold that he won in his battles. And then after he dies, all Israel worships the idol as a God, and the cycle begins again. The next main judge is Jephthah, who's something of a mafia thug living up in the hills. And when things get really bad for Israel, the elders come to him begging for his help. And Jephthah was a very effective leader. He won lots of battles against the Ammonites, but he was so unfamiliar with the God of Israel, he treats him like a Canaanite God. He vows to sacrifice his daughter if he wins the battle. This tragic story, it shows just how far Israel has fallen. They no longer know the character of their own God, which leads to murder and to false worship. The last judge, Samson, is by far the worst. His life began full of promise, but he has no regard for the God of Israel. He was promiscuous, violent, and arrogant. He did win brutally strategic victories over the Philistines, but only at the expense of his own integrity, and his life ends in a violent rush of mass murder. Now, a quick note here. You'll notice a repeated theme in the main section of the book, that at key moments, God's Spirit will empower each of these judges to accomplish these great acts of deliverance. Now, the fact that God uses these really screwed up people doesn't mean he endorses all or even any of their decisions. God is committed first and foremost to saving his people, but all he has to work with is these corrupt leaders. And so work with them, he does. This whole section is designed to show just how bad things have gotten. You can't even tell the Israelites and the Canaanites apart anymore. And that's just the leaders. The final section shows Israel as a whole hitting bottom. There are two tragic stories here, and they are not for the faint of heart. They're structured by this key line that gets repeated four times at the close of the book. In those days, Israel had no king and everyone did what was right in their own eyes. The first story is about an Israelite named Micah who builds a private temple to an idol and that gets plundered by a private army sent from the tribe of Dan. So they come and they steal everything and then they go and burn down the peaceful city of Laish and murder all of its inhabitants. It's a horrifying story. When Israel forgets its God, might makes right. The final story of the book is even worse. It's a shocking tale of sexual abuse and violence, which all leads to Israel's first civil war. It's very disturbing. And that's the point. These stories are meant to serve as a warning. Israel's descent into self-destruction is the result of turning away from the God who loves them and saved them out of slavery in Egypt. And now Israel needs to be delivered again from themselves. The only glimmer of hope in this story is found in this repeated line in the last part of the book. It actually forms the last sentence of the story. Israel 
has no king. And so the stage is set for the following books to tell the origins of King David's family, the book of Ruth, and also the origins of kingship itself in Israel, the book of 1 Samuel. But the story of Judges has value as a tragedy. It's a sobering explanation of the human condition, and ultimately it points out the need for God's grace to send a king who will rescue his people. Welcome back, boys and girls. Yes, I'm sure you paid attention while watching that video, right? So, who are the people that kept sinning? Yes, the children of Israel, the Israelite. You know, God took them out of Egypt into the promised land and God made a promise to them and told them that you have to promise me that you're not going to serve any other god except me you're not going to worship other gods and you're going to obey my commandments so that i can keep my promise that i've made to you as well you know but what did they do they kept sinning they forgot all that they promised god they forgot the good things that god did for them in the, in the past, you know, bringing them out of Egypt, you know. And, you know, let's just break our topic down a little bit. The people kept sinning. What is a sin, you know? When we say sin, a sin is something that you do that is not in the will, that is against the will of God. Let's just put it that way. So, God said, thou shall not steal, because God does not want his children to steal, right? But if as a boy or a girl, you know, you steal mommy's, you know, little coin sometimes, that is a sin, because God won't be happy with you for stealing. So, that is a sin. When you do something, that is against God's commandment. That is a sin. So the children of God, the children of Israel, they kept sinning, you know, disobeying God, not obeying God's commandment, worshiping other God. And remember, God's commandment says, Thou shalt not worship another God except me. So if you worship another God, that's like an idol. And God was not happy with the children of Israel. God was angry with the Israelite. And remember, our memory verse says, the wages of sin is death. That means when you sin, there are consequences. God will be unhappy, he will be angry, and there will be consequences for those sins. Yes. So what lesson are we taking home today as boys and girls, children of God, that we should be grateful at all times. The children of Israel, the Israelites, they were ungrateful. God, you know, God took them out of the land of Egypt where they were slaves and, you know, they were just, they were, they were under the, the control of their enemies. God took them out. And, you know, took them to the promised land. So in return, they were supposed to be obedient to God and be grateful to God. But they were ungrateful and they kept doing things that God had told them not to do. So as children of God, we are supposed to be obedient to God. We are not supposed to sin and do things that God does not want us to do. We are supposed to obey God's commandments. That is the lesson. Because the children of Israel, they had to face the consequences of their action. And which is why we are learning from them today, so that we will not face God's anger. Which is why we are learning from them today, so that we can always obey the commandments of God and stay in the will of God. And may God help us in Jesus' name. Amen. Our friend is going to help us recite our memory verse one more time. Please listen, boys and girls. Romans chapter 6, verse 23. For the wages of sin is death, 
but the gift of God is eternal life in Christ Jesus our Lord. Thank you, our dear friend, for reciting our memory of us once again. God bless you. That is the end of our topic today, boys and girls. And remember, God loves you and I love you too. Have a great week. Before we go, let's say a word of prayer. And so our righteous Father, we bless you, we worship your holy name. Thank you, God, for speaking to us today. Thank you for bringing us to church today. Thank you, Lord, for keeping us through the week. Thank you for your word as come forth, oh God. Help us even in the course of the week, oh God, as we go ahead. That you'll be with us. Help us to obey you. Help us not to sin against you, God. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. Amen. Have a great week, boys and girls. Bye-bye. Romans 6.23